What is your name, please? My name is Rosemary. Today, Rosemary, together with two imposters, will try to fool this panel. Kitty Carlisle, Orson Dean, Peggy Cass, and Tom Poston. It's all gonna happen right here on To Tell the Truth. This portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by new Super SOS soap pads, now with longer lasting soap. And now, here's our host on To Tell the Truth, Bud Collier. To tell the truth, and good afternoon, panel. Oh, good, good afternoon, afternoon you folks. Yeah, you don't know how I treasure that one moment with you every day. Rosemary, of course, will be back with two imposters later on in our show to try to fool this brilliant panel of ours. But now let's meet our first team of challengers. One of these people for many years has been one of England's outstanding tea tasters. What is your name, please? My name is Ray Culverhouse. My name is Ray Culverhouse. My name is Ray Culverhouse. Panel in front of you are today's envelopes, the contents of which you've never seen before. Open up envelope number one, if you will, and follow along. I, Ray Culverhouse, am an authority on tea, as well as one of the leading tea tasters in Britain. I am a member of a number of tea companies and associations, and a remarkable part of the London tea market is that although millions of pounds change hands each week at the tea auctions, no legal documents pass between producers, brokers, and buyers. A word is a promise. Last year alone, the British people drank 530 million pounds of tea. This included such exotic blends as Kimon, Darjeeling, Oolong, and Lapsang Souchong. As a tea taster, I personally have sampled as much as 50,000 different teas in a year. Signed, Ray Culverhouse. And we'll start the questioning, if we may, with Kitty Carlisle. Thank Kitty. you, bud. Number one, where is Darjeeling? In India. What's the capital? Of Darjeeling. Mm -hmm. Number two, do Kilo. you know? Huh? Keelong. Keelong? Oh, number two, what is the most expensive tea? One of the most expensive is the China teas. Uh, is that Lapsang Oolong? Yes, that is one of the most expensive. Um, number three, when you make your deal in this tea market, how do you conclude the deal? With a handshake or a nod, or you just raise a finger, or well, like at an auction? normally with a nod and a handshake. And, and you know to whom you've done it. Right. And they know you. Right. And that's it. Right. Um, number two, um, where does green tea come from? From Oolong in China. And black tea, number one, where does that come from? Anywhere I could do. Any, anybody grows black tea? All the major producing countries certainly produce black tea. Thank you. Number three, uh, where, where do you find the most... I'm sorry, Kitty. Tom. Oh, I would like to ask uh, number one, for instance. Surely somebody in the course of the uh, tea brokerage and so forth has defaulted on a promise. Does, uh, can, does that handshake and, and nod stand up in court? No. It's known as honor among teas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number... Number three, what is English breakfast? I see that on uh, tea labels. English breakfast is just a good, uh, ordinary blend. A blend of tea. Number two, uh, tell us what benefit can be derived from drinking tea. Uh, I'd like to know because I have some here. <laughs> well, it saves you drinking other stronger drinks, for one thing. Uh -huh. oh, well, and it's also supposed to have medicinal properties, at least uh, um, it used to be. Peggy so. Cass. Thank you. Uh, number three, why do they say Bring the pot to the water rather than the water to the pot. Because your water should be right at the peak of boil. It should not be overboiled. Thank you. Now, number one, how long should tea steep? Three, not less than three minutes and not more than six. Thank you. Uh, number two, what's orange pico? 
Well, it's a blend of China, China teas. Thank it's you. A, a special blend. Number three, does, does England still get tea from out of communist China? From communist China? Yes. There's still some Chinese tea available, yes. I mean, do they, are they growing it there and exporting it still? There's not very much tea exported from China. They use most of it themselves. Hmm. Number one, who's Earl Grey? Arson Bean. <laughs> Sorry. Major. Number three, I know a little old lady with gold wedgies and ankle socks who always says, I think I'll have a, a, a cup of cambric tea. What is cambric tea that little old ladies are so fond of? Cambric tea? Cambric tea. Always goes with Melba toast. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I, I don't know any little old ladies with that sort of attire. <laughs> yeah, number one, do you know what cambric tea is? Two. Surely you know cambric tea. Cambric tea? Well, it has something to do with the Welsh people, oh, I imagine. Oh, mercy. Number two. Now, <laughs> what are, uh, tea-wise, what, what I mean when I say fish eyes? Yeah. In terms of the preparation. Number two? Number three, I mean? I'm sorry? Could you fish repeat? eyes. What are fish eyes? Yeah, it's some fine big bubbles you're supposed to bring. It says, bring it until it's fine big fish eye bubbles, you know, not the rotten little things. All right. Number one. Uh, if oolong tea is so expensive, why does every little one-armed Chinese joint serve oolong tea? Because it's typically Chinese, I uh, Is that it? No, where the money is no object when it comes to That's all the time we have. Time for you to mark your ballots now, and please do so at once without any consultation whatsoever. And don't change once you have marked either. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. Team of challengers, of course, will receive $100 for each incorrect vote. Ballots all marked, panel? No. No? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh darn son of a gun. Ooh, Dragging Tom. your tea bag. Tom is mumbling again, bud. I know. I finally voted for number one, bud, he, even though I thought, why should he know about the capital of Darjeeling and all that stuff? But, but the fact that he, that he tried to answer it made me think that he was a fibber. So why did I vote for him? Tune in next week. <laughs> Peggy Cat. I voted for number one. And, and number two, Cambridge tea is weak tea with a lot of milk in it that you give to children. I don't think it's Welsh. Number one seemed knowledgeable to me, and so I voted for number one. <sighs> <laughs> oh, Arson Bean. It's the saddest thing I ever heard. <laughs> I voted for number one as well, and, but I now think I'm wrong because uh, I, I saw a kitty blanch visibly when uh, he gave the wrong name, I think, for the capital of uh, Shmagegiland or whatever it is. <laughs> But I voted for him anyway because he looks like a merchant prince to me. Kitty. Well, I voted for number two, but I got wrong answers from everybody, according to me. Number three said the, the water should be boiling. That's why you bring the pot to the water. That's not true. That you is bring true. the pot to the water. Well, so you, you, you heat the pot first. Yeah, but you, you were supposed to bring the teapot to that's the right. water. Before, well, that's what he said. Well, not quite. Now, and nobody knew what cambric tea was, and everybody knows that's weak tea that you give to children with a lot of milk well, in it. Well, little old ladies with gold. And Darjeeling, I don't think his capital is Kimun, <laughs> so I voted for number two. Well, there we have it. All the votes are in, marked, the reasons given, you heard, and we'll find out which one in truth is Ray Culverhouse in a so, panel, votes are all in, as you gave them. And, of course, Tom, Peggy, and Orson all voted for number one. Kitty alone voted for number two. So, let's find out now which one of these three persons, in truth, is the authority on tea. Will the real Ray Culverhouse please stand up? Ray Culverhouse number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Georgina Harwood. I'm a registered nurse in New Jersey. Thank you. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Hugh Gardner. I represent European textile mills. Thank you. Checking the score. Panel was a little smart there. They got running with the hounds in the right direction for some reason. So there was only one incorrect vote, but that's still worth $100. And our sincere thanks to you for being with us. Only hope you had as good a time as we did. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>
Our guest today started out as a star at the age of three when she won an amateur contest as a singer. By the time she was 10, she had her own network radio program and had sung to huge audiences in every major city in the country. But her star only got brighter through the years, on the stage, in nightclubs, in motion pictures, and, of course, as the lovable Sally Rogers on The Dick Van Dyke Show. Our guest today, Rosemary. <laughs> This portion of To Tell the Truth was brought to you by new Jell-O Golden Egg Custard. Needs no baking. The next portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by Bravo, the tough new floor wax. Panel, these three ladies all claim to be, as you heard, Rose Marie. Let's start the questioning, if we may, with Orson Bean. Orson? Thank you. Number two, when you were a star at the age of three, what were you known as? I was known as Baby Rose Marie. Yeah, isn't that sweet? Number three, when you were known as Baby Rosemary, did you ever go out with Baby Leroy? Huh? <laughs> 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 Same time when I was a star. Oh, <laughs> I see. I guess. Well, number one, uh, <laughs> uh, do, do you, uh, how I, do you, know, <laughs> do you recommend, uh, people putting their kids in the show business? <laughs> yes, very much. Yeah, like <laughs> Sorry to break in, Orson. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number one, are you a trained singer? No. You're not? No. Number two, do you read music? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, how many sharps in the key of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, G? In the key of G, there are six sharps. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, number two, I'm always interested in beginnings. Were your family in, in the theater? Number Probably. three? Yes, my father was in show business. Hey, well, what did he do? He was a singer, too. Oh. Uh, number two, were you frightened when you first went on the stage? No, I was too young to be frightened. Did you ever get scared? I'm sorry. Ah, we'll never find out. Tom Poston. Number three, where would I find Joe the bartender? <laughs> Number three, right. you? That would be um, on Jackie Gleason's show. Oh, yeah, but I, I, I meant generally. Okay, number two, uh, does Maury Amsterdam play an instrument? Yes. What is that? What is that, number two? He plays a banjo. Thank you. Number one, uh, uh, what does Dick Van Dyke do on Sunday? Goes to church. What does he do there, number one? He talks to the congregation. Thank you. Number three, is Mary Ta Peggy Cass. Thank you. Number three, were you ever in a Broadway musical? <laughs> yes, the first one I was in was, was with Phil Silver's Pop Banana. Thank you. Number one, what camera technique did they use on the Dick Van Dyke show when they filmed it? They used three cameras. Thank you. Number two, he's a killer. What's Carl Reiner's wife's first name? Wow. Judy. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, number three, who produced the Dick Van Dyke Show? That was John Rich. Uh, That's it. Time for you to mark your ballots. Take off your headphones, if you will. So on the information that you have gleaned, mark now. Vote, if you will. I forget who I asked. Vote for. Without any consultation oh, and without changing, Vote for number one. Vote for Rosemary number two. Or Rosemary number three. Are all ballots marked. Very well. Tom, for I whom did you. Oh, it, turned out, it turned out that I, I don't know who John Rich is. I'm so accustomed to you marking first that I uh, jumped the gun a little bit there. I Tom. finally voted for number one, although I think she should either have known or said that Dick teaches Sunday school. However, I guess that you could be called addressing the congregation. So I voted for number one. Peggy. Or he plays a cello. Yeah. Number two, Carl Reiner's wife's name is Stella. So I voted for number three. I didn't vote for number one because she said somebody played a banjo and he plays a cello. No, it was number two. Oh. <laughs> John Rich was the producer. Is yeah, but John, producer? yeah. See, the thing is, with those masks on, I can never remember who's talking. Yeah. <laughs> Orson Bean. 
Yeah, wonderful, Peggy. Uh, <laughs> how long have I been sleeping? I uh, <laughs> sleep wouldn't... forever if you don't watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the number three. Uh, I always feel sorry for these poor wretched women because uh, you know, how could you brief somebody on uh, Carl Reiner's wife's name? You could probably stick him on that. <laughs> Kitty Kitty early morning, surely. <laughs> I voted for number three because I think I got wrong answers, as, di as did the rest of the panel from the other two ladies. <laughs> all right, there are the votes all in. We find out which one is really <laughs> Rosemary in a minute. Right after this word of special interest. All right, now it's time to find out which of these three persons in truth is Rosemary. Uh, number, let's see, it's your Peggy, let's see, Tom voted for number one, Peggy, Orson, and Kitty all voted for number three. So number three, you got the most votes. Are you Rosemary? No. I'm afraid not. Oh. <laughs> all right, you other two ladies may unmask now completely. We'll discover who Rosemary is for ourselves. And there she is, number one. Number two. I'm a trade singer. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My real name is Susan Hall, and I'm an executive secretary at Shalik and Dreyer Advertising. Thank you. And number three, you got the most votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Margaret Gray, and I'm a musician. Rosemary, how can I tell you how happy we are to have you here? Thank you. It's wonderful. But, Kitty, I am not a trained singer. I've never taken a lesson in my life. Really? And I forgot about the Sunday school. I, I forgot that he was an, uh, an elder in the Presbyterian Church. He'll kill me for that. <laughs> no, if he's a Presbyterian, he'll forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So don't worry about that. Have you got any new plans for, for television? Well, I have a, a new panel show of my own that's on every morning. And I've been doing some pictures and uh, lots of television. And then there's a new movie out, isn't there? Yes, there's a new movie out called Dead Heat on a Merry-Go-Round that I'm in. Good fun? Yes, wonderful fun. <laughs> James Bond type of thing. Oh, great. <laughs> well, a joy to have you here with us, Thank believe you, me. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Thank and in checking the score, we find that there were three incorrect votes. Very unusual for this celebrity spot. Three times $100, $300, ladies, and our sincere thanks to you for gracing our show today. Goodbye and God bless Thank you. you. And that's all we have time for today, but I loved every minute of it. Hope you did. Goodbye, Thank you, See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, too. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. This portion of the Tell the Truth is brought to you by Bravo, the tough new floor wax. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Tuckman production. This is Johnny Olson speaking. This program was pre-recorded.